this project, the Knowledge and Application of Evidence-Based Practice by State VR Agency staff, is part of the research projects at the Center for on Knowledge Translation for Employment Research. This um, KTER center that is funded by NIDER is um, located in um, Austin, Texas at CEDL and here at VCU, um, at the VCU RRTC Center. The PI for the KTER Center is Dr. John Westbrook at CEDL. An overarching goal is to improve the outcomes of people with disabilities. Working goals are to produce and facilitate the use of evidence-based practices in, in employment for people with disabilities and translating strategies um, to increase the high use of employment-based research. There are four audiences that the KTE Center um, is uh, focused on, and they are the vocational rehab uh, VR professionals, the employers, the policymakers, and the people with disabilities. The KTR Center Research Center has um, several activities. One is to identify evidence in selected specific employment topics through our systematic reviews and then also looking at identifying factors that impede or facilitate the use of employment research. And last, based on what we learn about the factors that are barriers and facilitators, we select knowledge translation strategies that promote research. And we are also in the process of testing uh, these strategies. We have two um, research questions that were related to this particular project, and they are how do pro VR professionals define evidence-based practice, and what are the most commonly reported factors that are barriers and facilitators to the use of research findings by vocational rehabilitation professional staff. The survey we used was constructed by the CEDL and VCU RRTC staff. Uh, we loosely used Carol Estabrook's instrument as a, a foundation for our online survey. We looked at the knowledge of evidence-based practices, the skills and resources in understanding and putting research into practice, and preferred method of receiving uh, VR information. We obtained all the appropriate IRB approvals, and then we were recruited from six state VR agencies. The sample consisted of 535 VR professionals. Okay, if you'll look at the sample distribution uh, table, you'll see that um, the southwestern state had the largest number of participants, followed by the mid-Atlantic and then the south too. We had two southern states and we had two mid-Atlantic states and then we had one western state in our um, sample. If you look at the demographics, you'll see that 67.9% were female and that the majority of them had master's degree. A few had bachelor's in some college and professional degrees, but the majority were master's degree level staff. The length of time at the agency uh, the mean was 12.6 years with a large standard deviation of 10.05. Uh, the median was 10 and the mode was 5. And 30% um, of the uh, respondents to this survey had been at the state VR agencies for less than 5 years. The range was less than 1 year to over 45 years. So we had a big range in um, length of time at the agencies. As you can see from the table, the majority of the participants were either VR counselors, senior VR counselors, or supervisors, with the VR counselors having um, the largest portion of the respondents. Of course, there were other type of respondents, including um, area directors, program administration staff, VR evaluators and consultants, specialists and uh, support staff. The first thing we did on the online survey, we asked them to define evidence-based practices. We wanted to get an understanding of what they perceived evidence-based practice to be. From this table, you can tell that 
the majority of them um, had a research-oriented definition of evidence-based practice, followed by documented evidence, proven effective, and practice and experience. Now, the uh, um, proven effective, documented evidence, and practice and experience, these responses were typically not research-oriented, but more having to do with their experiences or their processes in which they went through are their perceived view of what the experts um, were doing. If we look at the definitions of evidence-based practice by states, we can see that although they may have different uh, proportions, the ranking of the, of the definitions stays the same. And so in that way, they're very similar. We also look at it by position. And again, very similar. A supervisor, VR counselor, senior VR counselor, all, most of them responded with a research-oriented definition. We did have some I don't knows and some strange other responses, but for the most part, it fell within, again, the four research, the research documented evidence, proven effective and practice experience. I think it's important to note that even at the research oriented definition, the responses were less than 50%. 44% of the counselors, 42% of the senior VR counselors, and 36% of the supervisors defined it as research oriented. Next, we asked how much they valued research. And we found out that overwhelmingly, they do value research. Of course, more of the VR supervisors valued research. And then the VR counselors did. And the lowest, which was 78%, but still quite high, were the senior VR counselors. Now, if we look at the degree in which they valued research, we can see that the VR counselors had a higher degree of valuing research. And in fact, it was significantly different from the VR counselors alone. And this difference was a large, with a, an effect size of 1.51, which is a, an ex, a very large effect size. When we looked at it, the values of research of, by the respondents, of these respondents, the Western and Southern states had greater degree of valuing research than the other states. Next, we asked, do the respondents perceive that their VR agency value evidence-based research? And we found that only 52% of all VR respondents agreed that their VR agencies value evidence-based pra uh, practice. Again, this is a little over half, but still it's not a particularly large portion of the sample. And we found out that the VR respondents in the Western and Mid-Atlantic states um, perceived that their VR agencies um, valued research and evidence-based practice more. We wondered what predicted whether they um, perceived their VR agencies as valuing evidence-based practice or not. So we ran multiple regression models. And for this one um, that you're seeing, this slide, this was the um, VR counselors. And what we found out is that if the VR counselors valued research and the supervisors, their supervisors expected them to use evidence-based practice and their agency supported them by allowing them time to read and keep abreast of the evidence-based practice, and they had sufficient resources to implement evidence-based practices, and they had access to retrieve evidence-based practice, they perceived their agency as valuing evidence-based practice. And these factors explained 40% of the variance, so that's a, a very large percent. But when we say that, um, it's interesting to note that the VR counselors, as well as the senior VR counselors, and the uh, supervisors 
said that they didn't have time to read the available research. And um, we, it ranged from 64 to 68 percent. And so, again, this plays a part in it. If they don't have the time to read the research, they're not going to perceive that it's important. Um, therefore, they're not going to consistently use it. And this is what we see, that there is a low use of evidence-based practice in, um, in their work. And we see that 55% of the VR counselors, 39% of the senior VR counselors, and 41% of the VR counselors are consistently using practice. So that's just quite low. We would like to see it much higher than that. And the Western State VR professionals were the more likely ones to use the practice, but again, it was still low. We, we conducted some uh, multiple regression models here, too, and to see what predicted consistent use of evidence-based practices. And what we found were four variables um, that explained over 40% of the variance. And these variables were when VR counselors were more likely to use evidence-based practice in their work, when, they, when the VR counselors valued evidence-based practice, when they were skilled in using research in their job, when evidence-based practice was clearly described in the research, and they knew how to practice the latest research. And so it was basically getting down to having the skills and valuing research. When we looked at senior VR counselors and their consistent use of evidence-based practice, we found two variables that explained 24% of the variance. And for senior VR counselors, being skilled in using research in their job and perceiving that the research and the evidence-based practices in the research were relevant um, to the consumers they served uh, was important and predicted the use, consistent, consistent use of evidence-based practice. Now that we know that they need knowledge and skills and um, it's important for them to read and have available information about evidence-based practice, so we asked them about um, ways they prefer to receive information. And uh, some of the ways they prefer to receive information was through interpersonal interactions. The top three interpersonal interactions were collaborating with other professionals, meeting consumers and consumers' families, and informal conversations at their job. This, is, this one's sort of problematic because there's probably two that somewhat fit into a good way of receiving um, evidence-based practice uh, through other professionals and conversations at work. Uh, but we need to find some other more formal ways, so we asked them about training what ways they received, why like to receive training as a way of transmitting evidence-based practice. And they, their top three preferences were university continuing education, university courses, and face-to-face -face workshops at office, unit, or agencies. We also asked them about um, networking. Uh, how would they prefer to receive information through networking, and they said people at the state VR agencies, information from the unit office, and third-party community partners are ways in which um, they prefer to network and receive information. And since online resources are widely available, we wanted to know if they preferred online resources. Now, for this one, it was not popular for all segments of the sample, but uh, there was a good, still a good portion that liked to receive information and resources online. 72% said they liked to receive information online, and 69% enjoyed using the webinars to receive information. It was predominantly female that used online resources, and also, it was the more junior staff that used the online resources compared to um, the older senior staff. Um, I'd like to say that if you have questions about the KTER 
please contact Dr. Kathleen Murphy at CEDL in Austin. You can see her email address here. If you have questions for me, Carolyn Graham, um, you can um, reach me at my email here at VCU, and it's on this page. Thank you.